The newborn babe needs special care and attention. For the first few days, it is well to have a fire in the bedroom in cold weather, but unless for special reasons, this is not advisable after a week or ten days. Even when there is a fire, the room must have a very free flow of pure, cool outside air through it, day and night. The sleepy seaside Otago towns of Karatane and Seacliff are associated with a famous New Zealander, Truby King. Seacliff was the location of a lunatic asylum for almost 100 years. Truby King was its superintendent for 30 of those years. Karatane, just up the coast, was where Truby King lived. Karatane became the birthplace of the Plunkett Society, an iconic New Zealand child welfare institution. Truby King was the sickly child of a prominent Taranaki banker. He decided against following in his father's footsteps and set off to Edinburgh to train as a doctor. There he developed a strong interest in the treatment of the insane. Nine years later, in 1889, he became the superintendent of the Seacliff Lunatic Asylum, New Zealand's largest. Seacliff was a forbidding place, but King put his energies into the farm and the grounds. He believed that outdoor work, exercise, fresh air and a good diet were the best treatments for mental illness. This improved the patients' lives, but Seacliff was not a happy place. One of the inmates who was apparently befriended by Truby King was Lionel Terry. Terry developed a powerful hatred of non-white races, especially the Chinese. In 1905, he marched 900 miles to Wellington to petition for a whites-only immigration policy. When his pleas were ignored, he deliberately shot and killed a Chinese man, Zhou Kum Yong, to gain publicity for his views. He was sentenced to death, but this was commuted on the grounds of insanity and Terry spent most of the rest of his life at Seacliff. In 1942, long after King had left Seacliff, fire broke out in an unsupervised secure ward. Only two of the 39 women patients locked inside survived the awful inferno. Five years later, the New Zealand author Janet Frame went to Seacliff as a voluntary patient. Following a misdiagnosis as a schizophrenic, Frame was subjected to over 200 electric shock treatments there. The town of Karatane has a more positive history. While Truby King was living there, his childless wife took in the baby daughter of one of the Seacliff attendants. The girl was not making good progress, so King's wife asked him to come up with a better feeding formula. This became King's new passion. His fellow doctors were unimpressed, so King turned to the women of the community. By 1907, he had founded the Society for the Promotion of the Health of Women and Children, which soon became known as the Plunkett Society, after the Governor-General's wife, Lady Plunkett, offered her support. King began to take ailing infants into his home at Karatane, and so began the first Karatane Hospital. Within a year, nurses began to be trained at the new Karatane Hospital in Dunedin, and many other hospitals were established. Karatane nurses and volunteers ran local clinics for mothers and visited homes to offer support and advice. King published a book, Feeding and Care of Baby, which soon became the Bible for New Zealand mothers. At one point, a copy was issued to every New Zealand couple getting married. King's strict belief that babies should be fed every four hours became his most well-known and controversial view – but the Plunkett system gained international recognition and within 30 years, New Zealand had the lowest infant mortality rate in the world. The main buildings of the asylum at Seacliff have been demolished and the site is now the Truby King Recreational Reserve. But King's other legacy, the Plunkett Society, is still going strong. Generations of New Zealanders can claim to have started their lives as Plunkett babies.